The Chaco is the third largest biome in South America and the second largest forest after the Amazon. It is the most dominant ecosystem of Paraguay. This tropical dry forest is rich in biodiversity and has a high number of endemic species. It may not be the most hospitable place for people, but many beautiful and fascinating species live in this hot, spiny habitat. Heading north from the capital, Asuncion, one passes through the humid Chaco, distinguished by its palm forests and marshland. Many species here are shared with the Pantanal ecosystem, like wood storks and spoonbills. Scarlet-headed blackbirds and several other blackbird species are common. Mammals include the giant anteater and its smaller cousin, the tamandua. These marshes are prime habitat for snails, and thus there are high populations of specialized snail eaters, the snail kite. It takes a good perch and good eyesight to grab snails. Its sharp D-curve bill is the perfect snail removing tool, and the top of a post provides a cutting board. At the end of each day, snail kites gather together to form communal roosts. They also nest in colonies sometimes together with herons and egrets. The black-throated mango is one of the few hummingbird species in the Chaco. A troop of black and gold howlers let its presence be known in a spectacular fashion. This pair of great rufous wood creepers bring food back to their nest. The humid Chaco has enough water to support capybara, the largest rodent around and one that is very aquatic. Moving northward to what the Guarani called the Gran Chaco, it gets much drier. The dry Chaco supports species that are adapted to the high temperatures and an extreme dry season. It has been said that Paraguay has two seasons, hot and extremely hot. In fact, the temperatures can drop to 12 degrees in July. An annual rainfall is about 400 millimeters in the drier parts. The black-legged Seriema is a Chaco specialty for the bird watchers. The wind here really doesn't cool you off. It's more like a hair dryer set on hot and high. It's the beginning of rainy season and insects are coming out and providing food for birds and many others. The brown cachalot is a large oven bird that forages on the ground and sings duets that are described as unmusical. The first rains have come and many plants have leafed out, while others have yet to flourish. All seem to have thorns that stay sharp all year round. White-fronted woodpeckers calculate how to hammer the cactus without getting a spine in their eye. This Chaco earth creeper gets a better view higher up. The common large parrot in the dry Chaco is the turquoise fronted parrot. Both sexes look the same to people, but using spectrometry, the feathers look quite different to the birds themselves. The 
local monster is the tegu lizard. This large lizard is omnivorous and is hyperactive in the summer months but goes dormant in the winter. It is the only known reptile to be partially endothermic. The Chaco Puffbird sits on a low perch and sallies out to grab insects. The Chacoan Mata is a large rodent that superficially looks like a rabbit. They feed on grasses and, well, anything that is green in this dry, thorny habitat. They live in small groups of up to four animals. Striped-backed ant wrens are difficult birds to see as they prefer dense, thorny shrubs. These piles of dirt are a sure sign of tucutucus, a rodent that lives 90% of its time underground. There are many stories written in the dust on the roads in the Chaco. Here it seems, two armadillos came together. What really transpired cannot be known, but could have been a territorial dispute. Four species of armadillos can be found in the Chaco, including the screaming hairy armadillo and the six-banded armadillo. Armadillos spend most of their time underground, and they have the best digging tools in nature. The large, hairy armadillo is widespread throughout much of South America. The southern three-banded armadillo is a dry Chaco specialty and one of the strangest animals around. Just look at those extraterrestrial ears. These funny little armadillos have long, sticky, straw-like tongues to lap up termites and ants. If danger approaches, they curl into a tight ball, and when the coast is clear, they unravel. During the long, hot summers, they are active at night, and in the winter, they're active during the day. Burrowing owls always keep an eye on things, and ants rule the natural world, as always. Crowned slaty flycatchers migrate during the austral winter to the Amazon basin. The Chaco has a high diversity of woody trees and shrubs. The flora is a mix of dense thorn forest and open woodlands with quebracho trees, mesquite, cactus, and palo santal trees. Then there is the bottle tree, or palo borracho. The olive-crowned crescent chest hides itself well, especially from bird watchers. Literally every plant here has thorns, and with a 40 or degree heat that's over 100 Fahrenheit, the Chaco isn't a particularly friendly forest, but like all healthy ecosystems, it has its top predators, like ocelots. The Chaco owl keeps the mouse population in check. Getting into the Gran Chaco at night is a must-do. Here, a crab-eating fox was just walking down the road as a tropical screech owl was hunting from a low perch. At the beginning of rainy season, many frogs just appear out of nowhere, like this red-spotted burrowing frog. These Chacoan horn frogs get right to business. Most country people throughout Latin America know this snake as a good guy and protect it. Why? 
because the Clelia is a snake eater, especially of venomous snakes. Large protected areas are important for many ecological reasons, but especially to give space for the apex predators. Jaguar populations have suffered greatly as cattle ranchers have encircled the last strongholds of nature, but they still hang on in small numbers. Jaguars need healthy populations of prey, like peccaries, and in the Chaco there are two species, the white-lipped peccary and the endangered Chacoan peccary. Both like to eat Opuntia cactus. White-lipped peccaries form groups of dozens to hundreds of individuals depending on the habitat. They are important seed predators and dispersers and provide food for large predators and indigenous communities. It takes a good eye to find a great putu and even a better eye to see its baby. Since water is limited at the end of the dry season, everybody comes to the few water holes, including pumas. The Chacoan peccary, or tagua, has a peculiar story. It was first described in 1930 based on fossils and was thought to be an extinct species. But in 1971, it was discovered alive in the Chaco. Lowland yellow-toothed cavies are rodents that are larger than rats, yet smaller than agoutis, a mid-sized model that Jagarundis would love just to run into. Tracks give us hints about the local inhabitants, and a thermal camera finds a Jeffreys cat at night in the dark. This wild cat is about the size of a house cat and does something unusual for cats. It stands on its hind legs to look around. The word Chaco comes from the Quechua language, meaning hunting ground. The Gran Chaco encompasses about 647,000 square kilometers, most of it in northern Argentina and Paraguay but also parts of southern Bolivia. The Chaco is flat, but biodiversity is high, with some 3,400 plant species, 500 birds, 150 mammals, and 220 reptiles and amphibians. The Harris hawk is a common raptor, and the rare pale titi or Chacoan titi monkey is found more on the eastern side of the dry Chaco. Greater thornbirds are the local engineers and like monk parakeets, make stick condominiums. Watch how this plush crested jay surgically peels this fruit and devours it. With a six-month dry season and few natural water holes, water is precious. The gray brocket deer, also known as the brown brocket deer, is a cautious drinker.
One Chacoan Chachalaca watches for danger while the other one drinks. The pompous fox lives a solitary life, but meets up for breeding, and both sexes raise their young. They do have to keep out a watchful eye out for pumas. Everybody needs to drink. The black-capped warbling finch drinks nervously and a tropical kingbird grabs a drink on the run while the crested ornero finds a secluded spot. Armadillos don't have to drink often, but they don't waste time when they do. This scimitar-billed woodcreeper is unique among woodcreepers in that it forages mostly on the ground. A young Harris hawk comes down too. Even nature's cleaning crew shows up to the water hole. The black-backed marsh tyrant is always found foraging around water. When it's this hot, a thirsty animal doesn't care about the taste of the water. Animals show up day and night to drink the precious liquid. These white-lipped peccaries are eating mud, which promotes better health, not only for peccaries, but humans. It's a good source for calcium and sodium, no sugar added. This dry tropical forest doesn't look like likely lowland tapir habitat. You have to remember that tapir are one of the few mammals that survived the great Pleistocene die-off. They're very adaptable. Barn owls perch by the roads, which are good rodent hunting spots. A great putu is out hunting too, but for insects. The Chaco eagle is an endangered species, and in fact, the Grand Chaco as a whole ecosystem is in trouble. Wildfires decimate whole swaths of forests, and there are few resources to combat them. Poaching is a big problem too. The trees of the Chaco do not make good lumber, but much of the wood is turned into charcoal for the European market, where consumers unwittingly fuel the destruction. The main reason for the destruction of the Gran Chaco is this character. Some of the world's largest banks and financial institutions are helping to finance beef companies linked to the destruction of the Paraguayan Chaco. Much of the deforestation is illegal. It has been shown that luxury car makers in Europe source their leather from illegal deforestation in the Chaco. While the primary cause of deforestation of the Argentine Chaco is soybean farming, in Paraguay, the cause is cattle ranching. And while commitments have been made to protect areas of high biodiversity and indigenous rights, nothing has slowed the destruction. The Chaco has one of the highest deforestation rates in the world, having lost 25% of its forest cover between the year 2000 and 2020. The future for this unique ecosystem does not look good. <laughs>